Hi, I'm Jeremy, the Zoo Nerd, coming to you live from my backyard in Los Angeles, California. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're happy, healthy, having some fun, but also being very safe. Our country still has a lot of issues going on with coronavirus, and it takes all of us to be safe. So please follow uh, the guidance, wear a mask, avoid large gatherings, practice social distancing. If possible, stay home. Be happy, be safe. Today in Critter Chat, we're gonna talk about an animal that is an icon of the USA, although it's very little respected. Today, we're gonna talk about skunks. Skunks are very easily recognizable. Uh, their coloration is unlike kind of everything else, uh, black and white, usually stripes, though not always. Um, and you often can smell them before you ever see them. Um, they live throughout the 48 uh, lower United States. Skunks are not in Hawaii. Skunks are not in Alaska. But they're throughout the rest of the country and they are quite common in most parts of the US. They also live a bit into Southern Canada and a bit into Northern Mexico. That's the, the most common species of skunk called the striped skunk. It is also the largest of all skunk species. And like I said, the most frequently seen. There are other skunk species out there. Um, most of them also live in North America, a few in Central and South America. And then they have some very close relatives that live halfway around the world, oddly enough, in the Philippines and on the island of Borneo. Those two species are both called stink badgers. So they're not really skunks, but they're kind of classified very closely to them. Skunks are technically in the carnivore order. And that means they're related to other mammals that eat meat. So things like bears, things like the big cats, the little cats, uh, dogs and wolves. Uh, also things like otters, badgers, they actually used to be classified in the family of Mustilidae that includes the otters and the badgers, but they recently got reclassified into their own family called the Mephididae family. Uh, that includes just the skunks and the stink badgers. There are also uh, three species of spotted skunks. Um, two of those live in the United States. One of those lives uh, further south down in Mexico and Central America. They are quite a bit smaller. They typically um, have black and white kind of spotted coats. Um, there are also four species of an animal called a hog nose skunk. They kind of have a bigger, broader pink colored nose. Uh, those are also here in North America and some in South America and Central America. And then very closely related to our striped skunk is a skunk called the hooded skunk. And it lives a little further south as well. And then of course the stink badgers, which I mentioned across the world in the Philippines and on the island of Borneo, uh, located in Southeast Asia. Striped skunks are primarily insect eaters. They mostly eat bugs. Uh, typically, they're going to go after things like grasshoppers, crickets, beetles. Um, they'll also eat worms and grubs. Um, so they're actually very, very beneficial to have around. As many of those insects eat a lot of the things we try to grow as food for humans. Things like lettuce and tomatoes and uh, a wide variety of other vegetables and fruits. They'll also eat on occasion small animals, so things like lizards, um, mice, uh, maybe a small snake, definitely birds or bird eggs, especially if they're ground nesting birds, things like quail. Um, and then snake, uh, skunks will occasionally eat plant matter, but that's usually only between 10 and 20% of their diet. Um, they'll go after things like fruits, nuts, berries, and uh, different like vegetable things. Um, things like corn, <laughs> they'll occasionally eat. Uh, but usually they'll go after the insects first, but they are opportunistic, they'll eat what they can find. Uh, some skunks have been documented catching and eating fish, so occasionally they are pretty good at fishing as well, uh, though not so common. 
Skunks are primarily nocturnal. That means they're mostly active at night. So if you don't see them very often, it may be because you're not outside at night. Or if you do see them, uh, sometimes it's a quick run across the road while you're driving. Um, automobiles are actually the major threat to skunks today uh, with many skunks getting hit by cars. And then of course, everyone smells them for the next day or two or three or four uh, because of their very pugent smell. Some skunks in some of their areas are crepuscular. Uh, that means that they're active at dawn and at dusk. Um, my experience with skunks is usually that time frame when I have seen them. So kind of later in the afternoon or early in the morning is when they're um, very visible to a lot of people. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end with my experiences. Skunks uh, live in a variety of habitats. So with a lot of animals, we usually think of them living in like the forest or the mountains or out in the wilderness. And skunks live in all of those areas. But they also live in uh, places like the plains. They live really well in uh, farming areas. Uh, eating kind of the bugs that are there to try to eat some of the crops we grow. Uh, they also live in wetlands, deserts, mountains, forests, plains, um, and cities. There are thriving skunk populations in many of the cities of the United States, and they can be seen in um, a lot of cities, including here in Los Angeles. I've seen them in my neighborhood on multiple occasions. With skunks, uh, their most prominent feature is the smell that they put off. Um, they are very well known for being able to spray a very stinky smell. But where exactly does that come from? How does that work? Skunks are members of the carnivore order and all mammal carnivores or most mammal carnivores have scent glands near their rear end, kind of by their tail, kind of by their bum. Um, and they use that usually to mark their territory with some species using it to kind of offer a defense against larger predators or a potential threat. That's what skunks do. And their uh, scent glands are highly developed and their ability to um, emit their scent is also very highly de developed. Within about a 10 foot space of a skunk, it has really good accuracy and it's going to try to spray you in your eyes. Uh, their uh, spray that they can smell is an oily mist from those scent glands. Um, it's kind of a liquid mixed with air that they can kind of control where it's going. And if they can get you in the eyes, it can make you partially blind for a short amount of time. Uh, typically for adult humans, they can't shoot that high. They're more uh, adapted to shooting things a little lower to the ground that might be a threat to them. Think about a big dog or a coyote or a wolf or a mountain lion or a bobcat, which are all potential predators for them. Hold for just a moment. Sorry, we got some fireworks going nearby and my dogs are outside, so my dogs are gonna be quite scared because of that. Let me just let them in the house. All right, sorry about that, I'm back. Uh, with skunks, they're usually gonna try to target in the eye range of most of those predators. Those predators are gonna be kind of like two to three feet off the ground. So that's really the area they can control to hit. Uh, the eyes of a tall person above five feet, they're probably not going to be able to get you in the eye. But if you're shorter, or if you're a kid, or if you're sitting down, definitely watch out for that. Uh, the spray typically won't hurt you otherwise. Uh, it can cause some respiratory issues if you have asthma, um, but typically it passes within a few days. Um, although if it's on clothes or something, the smell can linger for quite some time. Before a skunk sprays, it's going to warn you. Pay attention to those warnings. If you see a skunk, watch and see what it's doing. If it's running away from you or moving about on its own, 
just give it some space. Uh, they're super cute. I love seeing skunks. I love watching them. I love to see how they interact, especially if there's a mom with a bunch of babies. Um, they're super cute. If the skunk raises its tail, back up. If the skunk is stamping its feet, back up. If the skunk hisses or growls, back up. If it's doing two or three of those things, definitely back up. They usually will raise their tail as kind of their first warning sign. The hissing, the stamping of the feet are usually their second warning sign. And if they're combination doing them, they feel threatened back up. They are about to spray. Um, and it's not pleasant. You don't want to get sprayed by a skunk. More importantly, you also don't want your pets sprayed with a skunk because then you have to clean your pet, which you usually don't love getting a bath or getting cleaned anyway. And that can cause some uh, pain and uh, some frustration on all parties involved. With um, the spotted species of skunks, which do live in, there's an Eastern spotted skunk and a Western spotted skunk. So they're in most of the United States as well. Um, they will typically do little handstand before they spray. They're a bit smaller. Um, so they'll kind of stand on their front legs and put their hind end up in the air that gets it a little higher to also potentially spray a bit higher. Um, so if you see that from a cute little spotted skunk, that's also a warning sign. With skunks, uh, the striped skunk is the one we're mostly focusing on. Their breeding season in most of their range is between February and April. Uh, February in warmer places like Southern California, April in colder places like the Northern states like Michigan, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, New York, all those good places. Um, their gestation or their pregnancy uh, is usually around 60 days, although they have the ability to do something called delayed implantation, uh, which means that if they don't have enough food or if their habitat is uh, a little unsure, if there's snow still on the ground and there's not a lot of uh, things to eat yet, they're gonna hold off, they're gonna put a pause on their pregnancy and then it can take up to um, nearly 80 days. So it's not a very long delay, uh, but they are capable of doing that. With that, most babies of the um, striped skunks are born kind of in May and June. Uh, with spotted skunks in the US, that breeding uh, or those birth cycles are very similar. The Western spotted skunk actually breeds in the fall and um, has a very long delayed implantation and then those babies are also born in the spring. For the first couple of weeks the babies are pretty helpless. They're bo born very small, their eyes are closed so it's kind of like a puppy or a kitten. Um, they need a lot of care from their mom. She'll usually prepare a little den in a hollow log under a tree uh, in some thick brush and keep them safe for a couple of weeks. At about three weeks old, they can open their eyes and then they start to kind of explore a little bit with mom. Um, they're still nursing till they're about week six or seven. And then they follow mom, usually in a long line, um, sometimes really close to her, depending on how scared they feel. And um, when they're doing that, they're learning how to hunt. So by two months old, they're already out hunting, catching their own food. Most of that is usually bugs. So it's not super uh, technical hunting. They don't have to hunt um, big animals that are gonna be uh, scared of them. Um, one thing that I found really, really interesting is a baby skunk is capable of spraying at eight days old. Its eyes don't open until three weeks old, but it can spray at eight days old. So uh, even the little tiny ones can still spray you. Their aim isn't as good, but they can still spray. So even if you see a little baby skunk, be very cautious around them. Uh, they typically have a wide variety of babies. Um, most skunks I've seen with babies usually have a lot of babies. I usually see like six, eight, ten babies sometimes. Um, I remember two different moms that I saw. One had six, one had eight that I watched for a long time. Um, so they can usually have big litters. Uh, it can be a bit smaller, especially if it's her first litter. Uh, it can be as low as like two or three, but typically longer or more babies than that. 
Many of the babies, unfortunately, do not survive to be adults. Um, there's a high infant mortality uh, because they're little, uh, because the mom has a lot of eyes to try to keep track of, and because they live in a lot of urban areas and they get hit by cars quite often, um, the, the percentage of babies that make it to adulthood is pretty low, unfortunately. Um, with skunks, with striped skunks, they can vary quite a bit in size. They can be anywhere from about two pounds as an adult up to about 13 pounds. That's about the size of a good house cat. Um, and they can be in length, including their very big tail, about 18 inches up to about 32 inches. So they can be very huge, um, with males typically being bigger than females. And their weight fluctuates a lot throughout the year. Um, in the winter time, they don't necessarily hibernate, but they can sleep for very long cold periods or very snowy conditions um, and not eat during those couple of weeks and they lose a lot of their body mass. They lose a lot of their weight during that time. So they can weigh twice as much in the summer as they do in the winter per individual. So that's a, a really kind of crazy fluctuation for an adult mammal. With skunks out in the wild, their uh, main predator across most of their range is the great horned owl. Owls in general don't have a good sense of smell, so the skunk spraying isn't going to affect them at all. Um, so a skunk is a very um, welcome meal for a great horned owl, and the great horned owl can swoop down on it uh, pretty quickly, quietly, um, and easily and both species are nocturnal or active at night. Um, so that's a good meal for the owls. Other things will try to eat skunks. If the skunk senses them coming, they will try to spray to defend themselves. But uh, some of those I mentioned earlier, bobcats, mountain lions, coyotes, wolves, bears, will all try to eat skunks as well. Um, many times people's dogs will try to kill skunks or uh, sometimes are successful sometimes are not uh, but dogs get sprayed by skunks more than people get sprayed by skunks and quite a number of both get sprayed skunks in the United States are listed as least concern um, their population for striped skunks is actually going up that's because they have adapted very well to living in human areas um, they can eat a wide variety of things including things that we grow um, they also can live very easily around humans as a nocturnal animal that's pretty small. Um, they can live in and around yards and houses, living under houses, living in um, sheds, in wood piles, in garden spaces. They typically will uh, take over other animals' burrows when those animals move out. Um, they're highly adaptable to a wide variety of environments and habitats. Skunks previously were hunted for their fur. Um, that kind of uh, diminished quite a bit in the United States in the 1950s and 60s when uh, fur became less popular as a clothing item. Um, in the United States, there is some hunting and trapping for their fur that still exists today, but it does not seem to be negatively affecting uh, their population. And in some places, skunks are hunted and eaten. Um, they are also sometimes poisoned or trapped because they are considered a nuisance animal uh, by many people. Especially if they're living in or under your house uh, or your yard. Um, with my experiences with skunks, I remember um, one time I was camping in the mountains in Utah and my brother and I were walking along the stream. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and we found a little skunk. Uh, it was probably just recently had left its mom. Uh, let's see, that would have probably been in late July, early August. So that would have been around that time frame. And it was just walking along the stream. Uh, we followed it for a bit. Uh, we didn't know if it could spray or not. It did not ever threaten or warn us. So we felt pretty safe. It was super cute. Um, I definitely experienced a lot of skunks that were like hit by cars along the side of the road growing up and we smelled many skunks. I also lived in an area where there were corn fields and onion fields nearby 
and we would sometimes see skunks running around the farmland at night if we drove through those areas. During my time at working in zoos, I never worked at a zoo that had skunks as part of their animal collection, although some zoos do. Um, neither of the zoos I worked for did, although we would encounter skunks on occasion. Um, some of those experiences were cute and fun because we saw skunks. Uh, some of them were not so fun. I remember one day I was working at the zoo. It was later in the afternoon. Uh, the zoo was actually closed by that time because we were getting ready for a big night event. And in the area I was working, a catering truck was driving along a road. Uh, and I noticed that the catering truck stopped, which I wasn't very happy about because I had to go put the animals in their barn that lived right next to that area and they didn't like it when big trucks stopped nearby. Um, but I watched for a moment and I realized that the catering truck was stopped because crossing the road in front of it was a mother skunk with her eight babies. Um, I watched them all kind of huddle across the road. They kind of shake as they walk, uh, which was super cute. And then they had a little wall to climb up the other side. Um, and at that point I could count the babies as the mom helped them get up the wall and then they went up under a fence and up onto the hillside in the park surrounding the zoo, uh, which was really cute to watch. And uh, I enjoyed seeing those skunks. Another time as I was leaving the zoo, um, at the end of my shift, uh, the zoo still had zoo guests in it and we were um, in the process of getting ready to close down for the day. Uh, there was a mom with six baby skunks um, near kind of the entrance to the zoo and many people were getting scared, many people were taking pictures. Uh, I just stopped for a minute to help make sure that people weren't chasing the skunks or threatening the skunks in any way. And most people were very respectful of the skunks, giving them uh, some good space as they walked away. Some people did think that our skunks had escaped and I explained to them that no, these were wild skunks that just happened to be at the zoo running through the, the hillside and the garden uh, that's part of the zoo landscape. There was a day where I was taking care of the bighorn sheep uh, where uh, there was a note left for me from the keeper the day before that there was a skunk inside their exhibit um, and it explained where it was kind of hiding near the base of a little tree. It had set up a home in that area um, and the bighorn sheep exhibit at the Los Angeles Zoo is a very large concrete exhibit so there was really, the skunk probably fell into the exhibit um, and then kind of found a spot to take up shelter and be um, at home in. Uh, we were also trying to get the skunk out of that space because we didn't want uh, to have to deal with the skunk spraying us while we cleaned, nor spraying the bighorn sheep or coming in and stealing their food. Um, so we set a humane trap to catch the skunk. Um, and eventually we were able to catch it and move it to a safe location and let it go up on the hillside above the zoo. There was another day where I was taking care of an animal called a fossa or a fusa. Uh, they are a carnivore as well. I'll do a future critter chat about them. Um, they come from Madagascar. They're really cool animals. But during the night, a little skunk had wandered into the fossa's exhibit and the fossa decided to kill and eat the skunk, um, which left a bit of the skunk behind, which is how I knew it was there. And I was the lucky individual who got to clean that up. Um, not the funnest of things to clean up, but it's a carnivore. I was a zookeeper. That was my job. Uh, in my neighborhood, I've also seen skunks out and about, especially if I'm out at night. Um, when I walk my dogs and it's dark, I always take uh, make sure I have a flashlight available and keep my dogs on a shorter leash so that they don't <laughs> find a skunk before I find the skunk and get surprise sprayed because I don't want to have to deal with that. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared with you about skunks today. I'll be posting some more information up on the Facebook page later today for you to check out. And as always, feel free to like, follow, share, and subscribe to all of my Zoo Nerd content across the platforms of Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, and on my website at jeremythezoonerd.com. I hope you have a happy Independence Day. If you are celebrating in America, be very happy, be very safe. Uh, try to avoid large groups. 
I know it's a holiday and that's what we typically do on holidays, but please, for the health and safety of everyone, be safe, be happy, be smart. Uh, if you're wondering why I didn't talk about more iconic American species today, I have previously already discussed uh, the two big American icons uh, that are often celebrated on Independence Day, the bald eagle and the bison. Uh, so look at old episodes of Critter Chat about both of those animals. They were both discussed fairly early. Um, I don't remember the numbers, but check those out on my website or on YouTube where they both live. Have a happy holiday. Be happy, be safe, be smart. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.